Hey there TCC, welcome to our online service. My name is Becca and this is Crystal. Hey church, we're so glad that you tuned in today and we look forward to worshiping together with you in just a minute. Before we do that though, we want to make sure you know about a couple of big things happening this week through Tulare Community Church. First of all, this Wednesday is our annual Thanksgiving outreach. This event is where we come together with quite a few surrounding churches and organizations to cook, package, and deliver about 5,000 meals to our local community. Normally, this event happens on our TCC campus, but this year we're so excited to move it to Pipeline Church in Visalia. They have a great outdoor covered facility where all the prep and coordination will take place. The event will be from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and all are welcome to come serve. No need to sign up, just show up ready to help anytime during that morning. Also, if you are able and inclined to attend an in-person service, we will be holding our annual Thanksgiving Day service at TCC on November 25th at 10 a.m. This service will be held in our sanctuary and we would love for you to be a part of that. We will not have an online service that day, but don't worry, we'll be right back here online next Sunday, November 28th, as we kick off week one of our Advent series. 
There is actually a ton of stuff coming up in the next month or so. We won't go through it all here now, but if you'd like to learn about the ways that you can get connected to life and ministry here at TCC, check out our weekly email sent every Thursday. If you do not yet receive those and would like to, contact our office anytime and we'll get you added to the list. Well, we do have a lot going on and sometimes it's hard to not get consumed by the busyness of the season, but the reason that we have so much to celebrate is because we have a loving and gracious God who has blessed us with so much. Whether it's been a year filled with joy and good things, or it's been a hard one filled with a lot of pain and struggle, our God is faithful through it all. He has never left us alone and He never will. That's so true. So let's give Him our full attention, our full praise, and our full hearts today as we go into a time of worship. Father, may you be the king of our hearts. More so than anything else, we have competing for that place in our lives because you are good and because we love you. Let's turn it over to the band on stage now. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Take it away, team.
Well, hey, TCC, it's good to be with you today. Open up your Bibles, if you have them, to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to be looking at verses 10 through 20. That's going to be our primary text for us today. So this is an exciting week. Uh, Wednesday is our Thanksgiving outreach, and then Thursday, of course, is Thanksgiving and our Thanksgiving Day service. Then Black Friday, if you're into that kind of thing. And then that weekend, it becomes socially acceptable to play Christmas music. I know that last Sunday, Pastor Ryan said it was acceptable to play Christmas music as soon as it's November, but that's just heresy. No, as soon as Thanksgiving is over, then it's permissible. So a lot of exciting things this week, but clearly, unquestionably, the most exciting thing of all is that this coming Tuesday, my family will get the keys to our new place in Tulare. So yeah, really busy week for us. We're going to be moving. And the thing about moving is it really alters your perspective on your stuff. A lot of questions arise like, why do we have this? And do we really need this? What do we need? Well, today in our series on the vice and the virtue, that's a question that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this is a season in which we deliberately and attentively thank God for his provision and for meeting our needs. And maybe you're coming into this place just uh, overwhelmed with gratitude, where this is just a bountiful time for you, and you're feeling blessed, where God is providing not only your needs, but also your wants and desires even, and you have more than you need, and so you're feeling blessed. Uh, but others of you may not be feeling that way at all. Uh, maybe you're watching this and, and you're in a place of felt need with prayers that don't seem to be answered the way that you want, where you have many felt needs, uh, relationship troubles, or serious health problems, or circumstances and situations where you need God to show up and you're just not seeing. Or you have many felt needs, but you're not seeing provision. But wherever we are in that today, I think God's word has something to say to us. So listen now to this from Philippians. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. You know, we live in the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. You know, if the poorest 20% of Americans were suddenly their own nation, they would still be considered one of the richest nations in the world. And when you look at it through history, it becomes even more stark when you think of all of our various creature comforts and commodities. My, my family's not particularly wealthy, but if you were to ask me, would I switch places with someone like John D. Rockefeller, right? someone who was obscenely wealthy in his time, America's first billionaire, would I switch places with him? My answer would be absolutely not. Not a chance. The man did not have air conditioning. We are richly blessed in ways that we don't even think of. We live lavish lifestyles, even compared to royalty, to kings and queens of old. We have indoor plumbing. They had a chamber pot. And, and forget about, you know, hot showers. And you may not have the best mattress on the market, but it's probably not bug infested. Theirs probably were. Or food, you know, what about food? 
And not just the amount, but the sheer variety. You know, we have food imported from all over the world, and it's right at our fingertips. They didn't have that in previous centuries. Our spice racks alone would be the envy of 16th century royalty. Not to mention our quality of life when it comes to medicine or dentistry or entertainment. We are materially, richly blessed. Even from the poor, even from the lower class in this country, our quality of life, our standard of living is astounding when compared to human history. And I can pretty confidently say that no member of Tulare Community Church, no committed disciple of TCC is without shelter or going to bed hungry. If that's not the case, please talk to someone. You know, reach out to our care elder. But I'm pretty confident that when at least it comes to our basic needs, we know what it is to have plenty. And it's good to thank God for our good circumstances. It is. But sometimes, if not most of the time, we don't really have a good idea of what our circumstances really are. I'm sure that the kings and queens of the Middle Ages thought that they were really blessed, that they were incredibly well off. But to this ordinary 21st century man, it doesn't look like it to me. I would never trade places with him. Now, what a difference a few centuries makes on perspective. But how much more so in light of eternity? You know, Jesus says this to the church in Sardis. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. They do not have an accurate assessment of their situation. We see this in Jeremiah. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. You saw the great disaster I brought on Jerusalem and on all the towns of Judah. Today they lie deserted and in ruins because of the evil they have done. They arouse my anger by burning incense to and worshiping other gods that neither they nor you nor your ancestors ever knew. Again and again I sent my servants, the prophets, who said, Do not do this detestable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or pay attention. They did not turn from their wickedness or stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore, my fierce anger was poured out. It raged against the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem and made them the desolate ruins they are today. God's people were worshiping false gods, and God eventually has enough of it, and so he disciplines them. But here's the response. We will certainly do everything we said we would. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven and we will pour out drink offerings to her just as we and our ancestors, our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At that time, we had plenty of food and we were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing and have been perishing by sword and famine. Oh, they are deeply, deeply misunderstanding their circumstances. They had plenty of food. They suffered no harm. And they thought they were well off when they were the furthest thing. We can have the wrong view of our circumstances. Which is why Paul here in our text is pointing us to gratitude and thankfulness for a provision that isn't circumstantial. Verse 12, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Those are wildly different situations. Those are wildly different circumstances. But here's the provision, verse 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That's one of the most butchered verses in the Bible. I love the Babylon Bee's joke on this. They said, context, Paul wrote Philippians 4.13 after narrowly winning church softball game. Yeah, sports is so often the context that this verse is trotted out. But what was he talking about? He was talking about good times. He was talking about bad times. Times when he's well fed and times when he's hungry. Times when he lives in plenty and times when he lives in want. That's life. That's life. There will be good times when life seems good, where you will have plenty and feel richly blessed. But there will be times when you will find yourself in need. Christianity is not the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. There will be bad times. Paul acknowledges that here. He's stating that he's been through tough stuff. 
We need to recognize that. There will be times when you will live in want. Maybe you're single and you're lonely and you want companionship and the blessing of marriage, but it's not happening for you. Or maybe you're a married couple and, and you want the blessing of children, but you're dealing with infertility. Now, maybe you're in grief and you need comfort, but you're finding it in short supply. Maybe you're dealing with health problems for yourself or a loved one, and you want and you need healing, but you're not seeing a miracle. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. A provision beyond our circumstances, a provision beyond our needs or our wants. See, knowing the true provider changes your view of your need and your provision. The Bible declares these words in Romans, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I know that we know those words, but I don't know that we believe them. We can get lost in our circumstances and not see our provider. We can get lost listening to our pain, listening to our hurt, and not listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd. And we need to be hearing his voice. And seeing him clearly because, and I'm increasingly convinced of this, we are bad judges of our circumstances. There's a docu-series called uh, Hoarders. And it centers on people who are dealing with a, a serious psychological issue. Uh, their homes are overrun with stuff. And they can barely move around in their own house. And it's a total disaster. It's unhealthy. It's unsafe. They are living in absolute squalor, but acting like it's fine. And in the program, people come and they clean out the house and they throw away pretty much all of it. And inevitably, the hoarder breaks down and starts talking to their psychiatrist because they can't handle it. Right? They, they need that stuff. They want that stuff. That stuff is their stuff. They want it. They need it. Their stuff gives them comfort and security. And ripping it from them is deeply unsettling and discomforting. And they freak out. And they cry. And there's pain and there's hurt. And it's real pain and real hurt. But it's unquestionably for their good. Even if they can't see it. They don't have a right sense of their circumstances or of their need. And that's easy to see when it's not us. But I think we too can be much the same way. Right? Listening to the voice of pain, listening to the voice of hurt, holding on to our wants, holding on to what we think are our needs, believing that our provision will give us comfort and security and peace when it's nothing but bondage and brokenness. If we're holding on to anything else but Jesus then we're holding on to the wrong thing. See, Paul can be content in times of want. He can be secure in times of need because he's not holding on to his provisions. He's holding on to his provider. There's a big difference there. Hear these words from Hebrews. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Why? Because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Trust your provider, not your provisions. You know, this verse makes me think of Rancho Sordo Mundo, which is one of our monthly missions that we support. It's a ministry to deaf children in Mexico. And it was started by Ed and Margaret Everett in the 1960s. They go out in faith. They buy some land in Mexico. They build a large two-story home for their family. And a, it's a boy's dormitory and a girl's dormitory. And it served as a boarding school to teach the deaf children of Mexico sign language, to give them a voice when they didn't have any. And it takes a year and a half to build this home. And three weeks after it's finished, there's an accident. And the whole thing burns to the ground. And no one is hurt, but it's all gone. And Ed and Margaret, they have no idea what to do. They, they put the kids in an orphanage, and they go and visit a missionary friend. And when the missionary opens the door, they're, they're just crying. And the missionary asks them, what, what's the matter? What, what, what happened? And Ed just says, we have nothing left. It's all gone. We have nothing left. But the missionary hugs them, and he says, but we still have Jesus. We still have Jesus because he promises to never leave us or forsake us. 
You know, Paul says in Romans, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That doesn't mean that you won't be in times of want. That doesn't mean you won't be in times of need, but it does mean that we can trust our provider. And in our time of trouble, we have people to share in our troubles. Verse 14, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in a matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. Paul has learned the secret of contentment in times of want or times of plenty. He can be secure in times of need because he's not holding on to his provisions. He's holding on to his provider. But we, as the body of Christ, act as Christ's hands and feet. The church is a manifestation of our provider in our provision for one another. It's a fragrant offering, pleasing to God. When we share in each other's troubles, when we aid one another and supply for each other's needs. We are a part of God's provision and an expression of his love. And isn't that so good to be that for one another? To be that missionary who hugged the Everett's and loved them and spoke the words of God to them when they needed his voice. Well, we do that within the church. And we do it beyond as well, meeting needs, sharing in troubles, providing for others in their need. That's what our Thanksgiving outreach is all about. That's what our care portal initiative is all about. Community needs get flagged and the church responds. Providing, helping, aiding, walking alongside, sharing in the troubles, healing wounds in broken families. And this is somewhat personal as, as one of my children was in the foster system. I was thinking about that. You know, Paul here says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I think our typical focus would be on learning how to be content in times of want, but it's both. We need to learn contentment in times of plenty and times of want. It's any and every situation. Just because you have your needs met, just because you have provision, doesn't mean you're content. Yeah, there's greed, there's envy, there's unrest and desire for more and more. And those are real issues. But I want us to see something else here. A common phenomenon you'll find with adoption with children coming out of the foster system is that the child will be more likely to steal or hoard, especially food. Uh, but it can be other things as well, uh, things that don't make much sense. And this stems from a desire for security. There's fear and there's anxiety and there's unease in their souls. And so they hold on to things. Provision. You know, we, we've experienced some of that. Not a lot, but, but some, especially in the early days. We would find secret stashes of stuff that she hoarded. And the saddest thing about it was that most of it was just garbage. And why? Why? She's provided for, isn't she? She has shelter. She has clothes. She has food. She has plenty. But it doesn't make a difference if she doesn't know or trust in her provider. And maybe that's where you are in life. You're not lacking circumstantially things are good you have shelter you have food you have clothing you have plenty but you don't have contentment and you're restless in your needs because you're trying to hold on to your provisions and not your provider but it's not about the provision it's about the provider now we, we are stand-ins for god as christians as little christ as the church 
And we do seek to meet the needs of our community, but not as an end to itself. You know, one of our mission principles is that we are a church. Here's what we say. Though there are many great things that arise from church, we hold that the fundamental purpose of church is to proclaim the truth of the gospel. We are unapologetically religious and unwaveringly proclaim that Christianity is the truth that sets men free. There are lots of good charities, plenty of social clubs and community organizations, but there is only one church and it is defined by profession of Jesus Christ as Lord. Provision doesn't mean much if you don't know your provider. We don't want to just meet people's needs. We want people of need to meet Jesus. Jesus says these words. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's provision beyond our circumstances. The Thanksgiving outreach is not just to provide a meal, but to provide a glimpse of Jesus. And our work in the care portal is not just meeting their physical needs, but a means to meet the true provider. Because you can have shelter. You can have clothes. You can have food. You can have plenty. But it doesn't make a difference if you don't know or trust in your provider. We can be thankful for our circumstances. We can be grateful for the provision we've received. But the reason that we can do all things through him who gives us strength is because we know him. We still have Jesus. We have Jesus because he promised to never leave us or forsake us. We can be content in times of want and in times of need, not because of our provisions, but because of our provider. Let's worship him.
friends, let's remember as we gather at tables this week that we are grateful for our provisions, but we are most grateful for our provider. And it is by him and for him that we seek to meet the needs of others. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of the glory in Christ Jesus to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen.